Okay. All right. Can everybody see? Oops, not yet. Yes. Can everybody see my screen? Perfect. All right. I'm going to put this into slideshow mode. All right. Thank you so much, everybody, for, for joining this evening. Um, this is our second workshop in the Civic Engagement Workshop for Newcomers series. So we actually have two more still um, workshops remaining in the series, and we'll talk a little bit about that at the end. Um, but for now, I can introduce myself. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Miranda Ciroli, and I am the Knowledge Mobilization and Social Action Coordinator here at Access Alliance. And I'm going to let my co-hosts introduce themselves. Maitili, why don't you start? Yes. Hello, everyone. Once again, welcome to the workshop. My name is Maitili. I work as a volunteer with Access Alliance. And uh, like some of you already know, even I'm a newcomer to Canada. And this workshop, workshop series has really been useful and informative for me as a newcomer. And I hope uh, it is the same for you guys. Hello, everyone. I'm Saud. Uh, I'm a student and I'm doing my placement at Access Alliance this semester. Uh, I was a newcomer to Canada a long time ago, um, and I'm really excited to be joining in the second workshop in this series. So looking forward to learning with you and also getting to know you. Thank you both. And Hello, oh, hi. Is okay. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> we've got something planned for you. <laughs> so we've got a fun activity, um, which we're going to use to get to know everybody here. So, um, so this is an icebreaker that we have prepared. Um, so has anybody played bingo before? Yes. Yes. Great. So you're familiar with that. So basically, uh, for those of you don't know, who don't know. Um, oh. I'm just going to mute um, if you can just be aware of the background noise there. So we've got a bingo game. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, mark, mark off squares um, in this grid here. And uh, we're going to choose them at random. And if the statement applies to you, you can please raise your hand and let us know um, how that uh, first tell us your name and then uh, tell us how that statement applies to you. So for example, um, if we picked voted in a municipal election, if you've ever voted in, in a municipal election, you can raise your hand, tell us your name, and then maybe tell us what, when you did that. So this is just a little way for us to get to know each other. And if we get four squares in a row, um, either horizontally, vertically, or um, diagonally, then we get bingo and we win the game. All right, so I'm gonna, oops, close out of here for a sec. All right, can everyone still see my screen? Yep. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna ask my uh, co-host, so to um, bring up a, a number for me. Sure, uh, number two. Number two, all right. Voted in a federal or provincial election. Purnima, do you want to tell us? Oh, I guess you can Hello. say your name. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I have three kids and all are moving around. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> so they say maybe I will uh, off camera sometimes. Sorry for that. <laughs> no problem at all. And yes, I did vote it. I think first time, last, this time, and uh, last time maybe it was 2018. Okay, yes. I remember, yeah, I did. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so we can cross that one off. That's yep. exciting. Thank Ooh, you. so satisfying. All right. <laughs> and we have somebody else joining. So that's great. Um, let's see who it is. Another Miranda, I think. <laughs> All right. So do you want to read me another number? Hi, how are you, everybody? Hi, Shah. How are you? <laughs> Good. We're just in the Hi. middle of a bingo Miranda. game, getting to know each other. 
So I'm going to read off one of these statements, and if it applies to you, you can raise your hand and introduce yourself and let us know how that statement applies to you. Okay, so next number, please. Ooh, number 13. 13. Okay, so that's this one, right? English is not my, yes. Um, okay, English is not my first language. Salam. Yes, hi, my name is Salam Yaqubi Jizarli. I'm a newcomer. It's my, I finished my second year actually here in Canada. And my first language is Arabic. And depending on my circumstance before coming to here, I learned Turkish too. So now, wow. yeah, yeah. not like fluently, yeah, but it's like oral Turkish. I can like handle with it. Yeah. Okay, great. And have you, you've been to Turkey? Yeah, like three years and a half. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much, Salam. Okay. All right. 14. 14. So studied or worked outside of Canada. Has anybody studied or worked outside of Canada? Maybe somebody that we haven't uh, heard from yet? Yes, I did. Shah, do you want to introduce yes. yourself and give us oh, a yes, more detail? Oh, yes, my name is Shah, Shah Mohyuddin. Uh, I'm from the resident of Tisdell Place. And also I'm an active volunteer of Access Point. I participate in different programs. And also this civic engagement uh, program I joined in, the, in person, I think that was held in November, maybe. Eh? Yes. Okay. So anyways, I'm very happy to join today also. But unfortunately, I cannot test after six because I have another program. There is also with city program and that is a deputation program on uh, city housing plan. You know, the, the official plan regarding mm -hmm. housing and mm -hmm. it will be with the consultant, Dillon Consulting. So I will be joining there at six o'clock and I until six o'clock, I will be with you. Thanks Great. We may thing. ask you to um, report back to us at the next yeah, workshop. Yeah, because I have already joined. <laughs> Sorry, I'm taking time. Uh, it's okay. I am already joined a deputation program of Dentonia Golf Course for gardening issue and food production program. And also, I have debuted in the city budget hall on 24th. Amazing. And also 27th in Scarborough. Uh, uh, budget uh, deputation program. You're so very involved. active. That's great. <laughs> active. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I try to be. Thanks for your Thank you. decision. Thank you. Okay. All right. So, do you want to read one more? Mm -hmm. Number nine. This one went to a community meeting. Mina, may I, may I call on you? <laughs> <laughs> Which one went to went to community meeting? I guess you can say that the first workshop was kind of like a community meeting. Yeah, yeah my name is Mina. I am from Nepal. Uh, I am newcomer. Uh, I am here in Canada since uh, one year. Uh, I joined the community meeting uh, before a few months in XSLI. It was really good. And I met a uh, Lots of people in there is in COVID period. Uh, now I, I'm I'm meeting again then. <laughs> uh, my English is low, uh, so I have some difficulties to speaking. Uh, now I want to talk of, about another topic too, like a such job, such a job for in the past year. Uh, I didn't solve the job in the past year in to uh, Toronto. Now I have planned to solve the job. If I get a good job, then I will do like uh, uh, like something uh, not physically difficult, like easy job. If I get in so office official job, like easy job, I will do. Great, that's perfect. That's one of the topics that we're gonna talk about today. So mm -hmm. thank, thank you. you for sharing. All right, I wish we could actually continue this, but I am conscious of the time. We may bring, bring back this bingo game again next time because I think it's kind of fun and 
it's really satisfying to um, click off these squares, <laughs> but we want to keep moving. So I think everybody here has introduced themselves, right? Yeah. Okay. So we are going to move back to the slide deck and. Uh, oh, Selvi, Selvi, did you introduce yourself? One minute. Did I forget Selvi? I don't think she introduced herself. Oh, sorry, Selvi. Do you want to say, do you want to just introduce yourself quickly? Miranda, um, tell me responded in the chat box that oh. she did. Oh, okay, okay, perfect. So we'll move on. Okay, great. Thank you so much. I'm going to hand it over to my Tilly to get it to discuss the goals of this workshop. Okay, I'm just going to request control. Should be good to go. Okay, perfect. So welcome everybody. Some of you who have attended the previous workshop already uh, may be aware of the goals of the workshop, but let me just repeat it for the new members. Uh, this workshop series aims to build the skills, the confidence and opportunities of newcomer clients and community members to participate in civic life in the ways that they desire with the ultimate goal of contributing to strong and healthy communities. So to put it in very simple words, this workshop is aiming to give you the information that you can use to participate in activities to improve the quality of your life and as well as the lives of your community members. Okay, so we had a very interesting workshop uh, in the month of November where we discussed the different levels of government, what each level was responsible for, and why as newcomers it is important for us to go and vote so that the right party, the right candidate can work towards solving the problems that are important or relevant for us as, newcom as newcomers. So during that workshop, we also asked the participants for their feedback as to what they would like to know about in the next workshop. And here's what they suggested. Okay, why is it not moving ahead? Okay, so today's topics are what does civic engagement look like in the areas of education, training and bridging programs, healthcare and housing. Who is doing this work? Meaning, which are the organizations that are actually helping newcomers uh, in the areas of education, healthcare and housing? And how can you get involved? So let's begin with the first topic. If you want, I can move the slides along. Uh, yeah, I'm clicking, but it do just doesn't seem yeah, to. I'll just go, go for it. All right. Okay. So once again, the agenda for today's workshop uh, would be uh, to discuss about the topic education, training, and bridging programs. Then we will discuss about healthcare in Ontario, followed by affordable and quality housing. Once we're done with discussion on these topics, we have a very interesting interactive activity where we all are going to have an open discussion about these topics. And then we will end the workshop with your feedback, where we would love, we would love to know about uh, your feedback as to what you liked about the workshop, what went well, what can be improved for the future workshops. So let's quickly begin with the first topic for today. Okay, so education, training, and bridging programs. Education, training, and bridging programs help newcomers acquire the language skills, training, job skills, and mentorship to transition to a new workplace, okay? So most of us, uh, I believe, I assume safely, that uh, have completed our education, our degree certifications from a country outside of Canada. So this may be challenging for us to find the right job here because those degrees, certifications probably are not accepted uh, in Canada. 
or the skills that are required here may not match with the skills uh, that we have acquired back home, uh, or we some of us may have language barriers. So to overcome all of these challenges, we have various programs, various training programs. So let's have a look at these training programs. We're first gonna talk about language training programs. Uh, these programs help newcomers develop the language skills needed to communicate effectively in the workplace. So one such example is occupation specific language training, which will uh, specifically provide you English language training that you need to communicate effectively on your job, say as a nurse, as a massage therapist, or as a receptionist at a hotel. You have to use certain words, certain sentences, certain phrases in English, depending on your job on a daily basis. So such specific like occupation specific language trainings will help you effect, commu communicate in English effectively in such roles, okay? Uh, there, there are also some jobs which require a very high level of English proficiency. So for such people, we also have enhanced language training programs. Uh, moving on to employment training programs, uh, these programs help newcomers with job specific skills and training to enter a new career. Programs may involve courses, networking opportunities and job support. Uh, so basically these programs are meant to teach you the job skills uh, that, which are required for the job that you want to uh, learn or start uh, working in. Uh, it will also help you network with people. What does networking mean? Networking means you get a chance to connect with people, to speak with people who are already working in the jobs or professions that you want to start working in, that you, are, that you want to apply for. So such programs help you connect with such professionals, such people, and these programs also help you with job search. Then we also have bridging programs, which are designed to bridge a newcomer's international training with the experience needed for employment in Ontario. Programs may offer skills or academic training, certification or licensing and job placements, okay? So uh, professionals like doctors, dentists, uh, psychologists, nurses, for example, have already finished their education back home. They are certified doctors or dentists, but they can't just come and start practicing in Canada. They need certain uh, licenses, certain uh, certifications to start practicing here. So such bridging programs help uh, such professionals to bridge the gap to attain the uh, appropriate licenses or certificates uh, and then start working in uh, Ontario or Canada. They also help with job placements. And then we have employment guidance and search programs, which help newcomers identify their skills and pursue relevant job opportunities. Programs may provide job search support, mentorship, networking, and post hire assistance. So organizations like Access Employment, for example, uh, they help newcomers sit and uh, actually make a list of the skills that they have. And based on their skills, they will provide you suggestions about what jobs you can apply for. They will help you make your resume and also help you search for jobs, okay? Uh, there are also uh, many websites uh, available on the internet. One such website is helpingnewcomerswork.ca, which is a very good resource to learn about such training programs, okay? Uh, However, newcomers may still face difficulty in spite of all the information available on the internet and so many training programs available. They may still have difficulty connecting with people to find the right job. So in such cases, there are many organizations that could help newcomers find the right job and help them develop their skills to uh, get the right job. Let's have a look at these organizations. Um, so organizations like TRIEC or ITPO are uh, formed by professional immigrants, okay, newcomers or immigrants like us to help newcomers develop, uh, to support the development of immigrant professionals, to help them find a job, okay. So to answer the question how you can get involved in civic engagement, here is your answer. 
individuals working together to form communities and make positive changes is a form of civic engagement. So you can do so by joining professional networks and associations, right? In the first slide, in the goals, we saw how you can get involved in civic engagement. So once you start working, it, you can get involved in civic engagement by being a part of such networks, professional networks or organizations that will help newcomers find the right job and connect with the right people. Okay, one such organization is ITPO. Let's have a look at what this organization does. So this is an organization for internationally trained physicians of Ontario, which engages internationally trained professionals to advocate for the removal of employment barriers for newcomers. So such organizations basically aim to advocate for newcomers and they, they also help uh, remove the barriers, say language barriers, barriers to get certifications or licenses, for example. Uh, they have, this organization particularly has done this successfully, uh, where we can see as per the article over here on the slide, some internationally trained doctors can apply for 30 day Ontario license to fight COVID-19. So we all know uh, during the pandemic, we had an emergency, we had a shortage of staff, doctors, nurses, et cetera. And it was because of organizations like these that newcomers, uh, doctors, physicians, nurses were able to start practicing uh, with a short-term license and they could actually help the government deal with the shortage and emergency that we all faced during the pandemic. We also, thanks to these organizations, there is also a bill which is now passed and has become a law which allows uh, certain professions, uh, certain professionals, people working in certain professions to start working in Canada without the requirement of a Canadian work experience. So that is a great achievement and it was possible because of uh, significant contributions of these organizations. So yes, once you guys uh, go ahead and find the right job, we would encourage you to join such professional organizations and networks so that you can go ahead and help other newcomers find the right job. That was all about this topic. We will move on to the next topic, which will be presented by South. Thank you for that great overview, Maitili. So next we will be discussing healthcare in Ontario. Um, so to start off uh, with an overview, there's quite a lot of governmental on the left-hand side of the screen and also non-governmental on the right-hand side, uh, organizations and groups that come together to provide healthcare and meet the healthcare needs of a city like Toronto. So in terms of governmental organizations, there's quite a lot of different levels in the same way that you have different levels of a government. So at the very top, you have the Ontario Ministry of Health, which is responsible for dividing up money, uh, implementing different policies and laws, and also managing the Ontario Health Insurance Plan. Now, underneath the Ontario Ministry of Health, you also have these Ontario Health teams, which are quite new, and they're essentially made up of different healthcare providers like Access Alliance, different hospitals, not-for-profit organizations, and they allow these different providers to coordinate services between themselves to best serve citizens. And then finally, you have hospitals and healthcare providers like your local doctor's office. Uh, and these organizations deliver healthcare directly to citizens and they're funded by uh, organizations like the Ontario Ministry of Health. But then you also have the municipal government. So the Toronto City Council, uh, which is responsible for operating your local public health unit. So for instance, uh, that unit would make decisions surrounding what regulations should be in place for COVID and also to coordinate municipal public health services and programs, things like Healthy Smiles Ontario. And then finally, you also have grassroots movements. So these are not governmental, but rather they engage citizens and health advocates like ourselves uh, to identify unmet healthcare needs and take action. So an example on the site there is OHIP for All, which is a movement of healthcare providers and citizens advocating for their right to health insurance for all Ontarians. So moving forward, 
we have some organizations that we can get involved in ourselves um, to showcase SEBI engagement in healthcare within Ontario. So we have a few different organizations listed on the slide, but maybe one to highlight is a patient and family advisory network. So this is a virtual network run by the Ontario Ministry of Health that anyone in Ontario who uses healthcare services can sign up for. The sign up process is very easy. It's just filling out a form and it allows you to get regular emails and updates that keep you in the loop with healthcare changes in Ontario and also allow you to give feedback as a newcomer on what these changes will look like to you. Now, like my TV, I'm gonna go ahead and highlight an example of what uh, successful civic engagement can look like or what the impact of civic engagement can be like in healthcare. Uh, so this one is local to me as I live in Hamilton and this example happened in Hamilton. So about four years ago, I guess now in March, 2018, uh, Hamilton resident and nurse Halima Al-Hatimi on the side there founded the not-for-profit organization FemCare uh, to address period poverty in Hamilton. And her goal originally was to provide feminine hygiene products uh, to homeless women across the city. Now that same year, in May of 2018, the Hamilton Board of Health, uh, made up by city councillors, was discussing providing feminine hygiene products in municipal washrooms. And so Halima delegated, uh, as Shah told us about earlier, in, in one of those meetings, sharing her own experiences and urging the city to take action. Uh, and I've just seen that Shah has to head out. So thank you, Shah. Have thank fun you, at your Shah. next meeting. Good luck. Thanks to all. Thanks to all. I wish you good luck to have this meeting success. We'll share Thank the recording you. after so you can watch of the course, rest. Of course. Okay. Thanks. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. So, the outcome of that meeting wasn't necessarily too favorable. Um, it led to some city councillors introducing a motion to provide feminine hygiene products free of charge in municipal washrooms, but that motion did not pass. It did lead to a lot of uh, attention by the local media on this issue, as well as a study for the city of Hamilton. And then all that finally led to a few years later in February of 2020, after many motions and studies, the city of Hamilton finally approved a pilot program uh, to provide these products free of charge in municipal washrooms. And the hope is that that funding will continue uh, as will that pilot program. So that's an example of how uh, the municipal government is involved in healthcare and how citizens like ourselves can get involved and delegate to push them to take action. With that, I'm gonna hand it over to Miranda for the discussion and poll. All right, so we've covered two out of the three topics so far. So we're gonna take a, a quick minute to um, share a poll with, with you all. Um, and let me just launch it now. So does everybody see the poll on the screen? Yeah. So the question is, which of these topics have you most recently heard about in the news or have discussed with others? It could be friends, family, um, you know, neighbors. Uh, have you discussed um, any of the three topics that we're talking about today? So you can go ahead and vote. And I think you can pick more than more than one. Oh, look at that. We're seeing um, equal numbers <laughs> across all three topics. That's we so have a well-informed audience. Yes, we do. <laughs> and I'm glad to hear that, um, yeah, that these topics are relevant or in, and in the news and that's, I mean, that's why we pick them, right? Because they're important, important to you. So uh, if everybody's <clears throat> done voting, I'm going to end the poll and share the results. So everybody should be able to see, yeah, equal coverage of these three topics. So that's mm -hmm. really interesting. Okay. So I'm going to just continue on to the last topic, which is affordable and quality housing. So, um, like Maithili and Saud, I'm going to give a very brief overview just to 
give you a little bit of context, um, like when we're talking about housing, what do we mean by that? So um, often housing is talked about um, as kind of a responsibility of the municipal government, um, or it's something that's kind of thought about at the city level. But actually, when you start to look at the broader housing system, it gets very complicated and there's actually stuff happening at all three levels of government. So the federal and provincial governments actually create legislation or laws which regulate things like housing development. Um, so this is the building of new homes, um, apartment buildings by individuals or by developers. They also have laws and regulations around buying and selling homes um, or not just individual homes, but also um, could be commercial property, stores, land, all of that. Um, and they also have rules and regulations about renting. So for those of us who don't own a home and we rent an apartment from a landlord, um, there are certain uh, rights and responsibilities that we, we hold as tenants and also landlords also have rights and responsibilities. So for example, one of our responsibilities as tenants is to pay our rent on time every month. Um, and the responsibility of the landlord is to make sure that repairs are done on time um, in, our, in our unit to make sure that it's a safe place to live. So we also have um, uh, responsibilities at the municipal level of government. So for example, at the city in, within the city of Toronto, Anybody who owns a home um, or a property must pay tax every year on that. And that money goes towards funding city services that residents of Toronto, uh, we all use. Um, you know, things like libraries, uh, parks, the police services is funded by partially by property taxes. They also have zoning bylaws, um, which regulate what type of housing can be built and where. <clears throat> So many of you have likely heard about this topic, um, but there is a severe lack of affordable and adequate housing across Canada. And this is especially pronounced in Toronto. Um, and so many people are affected by this that it's basically led to what they call um, a housing crisis. So there's a couple of factors that we wanna highlight that have contributed to this crisis. Number one, demand has grown faster than supply. So there are more people looking for housing than there is housing available. Um, as an example, between 2016 and 2021, the demand for new homes grew by 430,000 units, but only 330,000 were built um, in Ontario. So there's 100,000 people um, that were looking for homes that there weren't homes available. And the second major factor is the fact that cost um, has grown faster than income. So housing prices, prices um, have actually grown four times faster and renting prices have grown two times faster than the rate of our income growth. So yeah, it's a big issue, it's a big issue. Big issue, yeah, no, it's, um, it's getting quite out of hand and Although I mentioned a lot of people are affected by this crisis, there are certain groups that are more affected than others uh, disproportionately, which means um, racialized and immigrant communities, especially in Toronto, are more likely to um, face issues with affordable housing or unsafe housing, poor quality housing. And this is a big conversation, but it comes down to, um, in part, uh, challenges and barriers that they face um, in securing uh, decent, stable jobs, which pay, you know, good wages, um, combined with the fact that it's just simply not affordable anymore. So, um, luckily, there are organizations that are working to address this crisis and have been for some time. One of them that we're going to highlight today is uh, Acorn Toronto. So they're actually an, a national organization. Um, made up of low and moderate income families who are fighting for social and economic justice. Um, and the Toronto chapter in particular has been fighting uh, quite a long time for affordable housing and tenant rights. So one example of a recent success 
around civic engagement um, was just this past fall. So November 9th, the Toronto City Council voted and passed its first inclusionary zoning bylaw. What this bylaw means is that most, not all, new residential developments are now required to include a portion of affordable housing units, which means out of 300 new units in a building, 10 of them have to be set aside for people that are on the wait list, low income people that are on the wait list um, to get affordable housing um, at like uh, affordable um, uh, rates. So this, um, there's definitely room for improvement. There's much more than we could, we could be doing around affordable housing, but this bylaw is seen as a step in the right um, direction and was the result of the collective efforts of different groups of people coming together. So this included residents, community groups, and supportive member, members of the Toronto City Council um, that resulted in this uh, policy being pushed forward. So groups like Acorn Toronto did a lot of work on the ground. They circulated petitions, they wrote letters, um, they de uh, did deputations um, and uh, successfully pushed this uh, bylaw through. I've signed a petition for them today. Sorry? I've signed a petition today for them. Oh, really, Acorn Toronto? Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's amazing. And it was about the housing, uh, affordable housing? Yes, it was. Perfect. <laughs> that's, awesome. You're already uh, being an engaged citizen. So that's great. So we're going to take a few minutes break because I you know, just want to give people a chance to um, go to the bathroom, grab a drink of water if they need it. Um, so we're going to take five minutes. Um, so it's 612 now, so 617 if we can uh, come back and, uh, and then we're gonna start our activity. Um, so I'd, I'd be great to hear a little bit more detail about, was it Purnima that uh, you said you signed the petition? Uh, no, maybe. Oh, Salam, <laughs> <No>. Salam. <laughs> but I did, there'll be one, uh, maybe three, some uh, city hall 101 today, <laughs> some of the workshop, maybe seven, they're going to start and I did the petition too. Amazing. But the answer maybe came from other participants. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we'll be able to get an opportunity to chat more about each of these topics um, in the activity. So uh, go take a drink of water, take a little break, and we'll see you back here in five minutes. And I'm going to pause the recording. Okay, so um, maybe I'll just, we'll just spend a, a couple minutes uh, just to hear some highlights from each of the groups. Um, so maybe starting with, oh, starting with topic number one, education, training, and certification for newcomers. Maitili, do you want to speak to a couple of the uh, topics that you uh, discussed here? Yes, so after discussing with both the groups, uh, this is what uh, we came up with. So these were the main barriers or challenges that uh, the group faced as newcomers. So language barrier being the topmost, uh, if I had to rate, uh, rate the uh, barriers. Uh, license issues where you have, you, you are certified, you have degrees from back home, but they are not accepted here. Uh, limited seats for newcomers, uh, especially for healthcare. That's what I got to know from Purnima. Uh, Canadian work experience is expected, uh, you know, to actually start working, to start your career here. Uh, and uh, for some, it was inadequate guidance about path ahead, how to bridge the gap, because as I mentioned, people are educated, they have degrees and certifications, as well as work experience from back home, but still they have challenges to continue working in that same job or profession here in Canada. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Great. Thank you so much. Hopefully some of the resources that we've put together um, will be useful. Yeah. Uh, I'll point out at the, when we share the slide deck, the last uh, slides 
have a much longer list of uh, resources available. So link link there so you can um, check it out and hopefully something uh, will be of use to you. So topic number two, so. Yeah, uh, one thing that was shared in both groups uh, was accessing services that aren't covered by HOIP is really extremely difficult. So things like dental care or eye care or physiotherapy are really difficult to access. Uh, so much so that a lot of newcomers uh, may forego or not access those services until it's absolutely necessary. Um, and then past that, people also mentioned navigating the health systems can be really difficult. So especially if uh, you're going from one healthcare provider or doctor to another, transferring health records. And then finally, things like waiting lists, uh, which have gone especially longer during COVID. Um, and how for newcomers who enter Canada during COVID, uh, how accessing information or getting integrated into the healthcare system can be really difficult. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm, yeah, and like we keep saying, like these are ch challenges for that many people face, but um, obviously if uh, you're in that three month waiting period and you're not covered with HOPE, OHIP um, or your immigration status doesn't allow you to be covered by OHIP or you don't have um, additional um, health insurance, uh, it can be, you know, very expensive, very challenging um, experience. So, yeah, thank you so much for, for summing that up. Um, and, and the last topic, we had kind of um, a range of different issues. I was really honestly shocked to hear some, some of the experiences by some of the um, participants today. Um, so definitely big challenges around affordability. Um, but, uh, you know, in terms of like not living in a smaller um, apartment than uh, you would ideally want, um, rent increasing, um, but also around uh, tenants' rights um, uh, and actually forcibly <laughs> uh, pushing people out of the apartment um, by cutting the uh, power and heat, which I thought was just really, really shocking. Um, so again, these, um, the Advocacy Centre for Tenants Ontario is a good um, resource, I think, uh, for, for many of us to become educated on what our rights are. Um, and that's a really good start, I guess, a first step for civic engagement to um, educate your, yourself. Um, so thank you so much. We're going to be sharing um, this uh, breakout activity um, in the folder as well. So you'll always be able to go back and, and check it out. Um, so I'm going to go back to our slide deck and we're just we've got five minutes left. So we're gonna be wrapping it up. Thank you so much for, for contributing to, to the discussions today. It was, uh, it was really meaningful. Um, and some of, you, some of you had actually already uh, taken action, which is so good to see, but mm -hmm. I just wanna quickly hear, were there any um, of the resources that we shared today um, or any of the actions that we suggested, does anybody think that they're gonna um, look into them a little bit more um, or actually maybe do one of those suggested actions? Miranda, uh, I, Mama, wait, please. Uh, I need one little information that you were sharing that ITPO, so it's like the some internship trained physicians of Ontario they can work with short maybe some licensing. Do you have any details information regarding that, please? So they're, like, yeah, they're they're a group that's advocating for changes um, on behalf of physicians. Um, so they're not a group that would necessarily be able to. Um, like it would be a group that you would want to get involved in um, to hear more about some changes in policy that are happening. Um, yeah. They're basically pushing for change, but they're mm -hmm. not like a, an organization <clears throat> that um, can uh, like physically help you with your specific situation, if you know what I mean. 
Um, oh, but there are other yeah. different resources, I think, that um, my Tealy shared that um, uh, that will help you with to get more information around that. Please, but, please but, just provide me some of the information so I can just, I, I heard of this when the pandemic just started. Yeah. And my shared is not for like those maybe, there are some criteria, but as you are now sharing, so could be there's something still ongoing. So I need to learn more, please. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so these, this list of resources at the end, so we've grouped it into three sections. Um, the first two pages are around education, training, and bridging programs for newcomers, um, and then healthcare, and then housing at the end. So tons of resources. Thank you so much, Saud, for actually putting all of this together. This is very helpful, and hopefully, um, uh, some of some of this will will be useful to you. Um, Salam, I think I saw your hand raise. Yeah, I was like interested in a lot of what you was like give us advice about and we still like new here so we still need a lot of i'm trying to engage in more and more any like workshop or like section i can attend and um trying to because like uh i think there's a lot of resource around but we should like find the way to to know what is the best for like everyone have he has his own like specific conditions. So we need to f figure out what is the best for, for each one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Exactly. Everybody's situation is so different and everyone's yeah, unique, coming. Yeah, unique, yeah. Exactly. So yeah, hopefully, the, yeah, again, it's like, there may not be one resource or one organization um, that answers all your questions, but hopefully over time, you start to get a little bit more informed. Um, and I, I find like a lot of these organizations there, there can also point you in the right direction. You know, if that's not exactly um, the information you're looking for, they will often do their best to um, connect you with somebody that can answer those questions. Yeah. And, and the point, the other point I want like to share is we came like with a um, hundred percent feeling that we, we will like continue through our like career or our like what we we used to to do or to work but i think we should like have more open mind to rethink again if we could like make it in a different direction or to find in you know we get like through new roads and to find a new path yeah and it's still like kind of success to find your way again it's okay it will take time but <laughs> Definitely, it will take more time. That's a very, uh, yeah, like positive and inspiring uh, statement to end on. Thank you so much, Salam. <laughs> so uh, the very last slide, because um, we're right at seven o'clock now. Um, oh, maybe I'll quickly, so you can mention um, what you can expect coming up at our next workshop. Yep, most definitely. So as it says on the slide, please keep an eye on your emails for the next workshop state. And we're hoping that some of the themes that we identified in the activity near the end, so on our jam boards, we can use to guide our next workshop. So at the next workshop, we can identify what changes we want to make in our communities specifically, uh, learn about what actions we can take to make those changes, and then develop the skills that we need in community development and advocacy. Uh, surrounding those topics. Great. And last but not least, um, we would love to get your feedback. So we do have a very, very short um, survey. I'm going to copy the link in the chat. Please take mm -hmm. just a couple minutes. Um, I know it's seven o'clock, but we would really love to get um, your feedback on how we can make um, the next workshops even better. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, we will be hanging out here in the meeting space if you have any questions, um, but feel free to open up the, the survey link there and just take a couple minutes to, um, to fill it out. And then we will wrap up the session officially. Will you take me to PPT? Sorry? 
Uh, will it send me to this PowerPoint? Yes, the PowerPoint that oh. will be shared with everyone. Okay. 